Yeah, so I gave a presentation about uh, Apache Camel and integration and microservices and what that looks like in a cloud, cloud native environment. Yes, yeah, so my talk was uh, to speak about security, about how to secure Java microservices application. So during my presentation, I did different things. I have explained based on simple example how we can review the different approaches and to secure microservices using, let's say, an intrusive approach based on what I call an interceptor concept. Next, we have discovered how we can secure the same endpoint, but at the level of the web container. And finally, we have discovered, and to simplify this process to manage the security aspect, the governance, which is not something which is easy to manage in a project, we have discovered using the AP man management platform how we can externalize this process not only regarding to the security, but how from the security and governance point of view we can simplify this process. And at the end of my presentation, I did a demo about to show in action how we can secure such project. So yeah, my talk was about a new uh, Apache project that we launched about Big Data. Um, it's a new, the name is Apache Beam, it's a new abstraction layer on top of all existing execution runtime like Apache Spark or Apache Flink, allowing the users to uh, exactly using the same code can address any kind of data processing both in batch and streaming mode for any kind of uh, execution runtime. So it's a new uh, uh, project sponsored by Google uh, and people from PayPal from Thailand. So it's, yeah, it's a very strategic. Uh, yeah, so I was talking about uh, discrete event simulation and how you can use it for uh, testing and analysis and optimization of production applications. All right, yeah, my talk was uh, called the knowledge of microservices and it was all about uh, making user, uh, making people aware that uh, the knowledge, the business knowledge is the most important about whenever we build IT solution. IT solution is not only to build IT for itself. We need to build something that actually covers the business requirements. And by that, bringing in the microservices, which is the current trend, into smaller pieces and, and providing this based on the knowledge information we capture from the business is actually for, uh, for, for our business that people can start using it uh, because they will see uh, directly the value of their business. And the domain-driven services and knowledge-driven services is all about business logic. Sure. Um, so. My talk today was about uh, continuous improvement. Um, the idea is we want to be building and uh, developing software faster, adding more value, but continually improving the whole time. Um, trying to create an ethos within our teams, within the way we work, that we can want to continually improve uh, and, and innovate and, and build better software. Well, I'm talking about mutation testing because uh, we very often focus on the quality of our code, but we rarely focus on quality of our tests. And mutation testing is something that can really improve this quality of test and show you if your tests are actually working well and checking what they should check. Yeah, sure. So my talk was about how Java developers can build and run Java-based applications in the, in the cloud and containers. Um, I was using a practical talk with some slides and then also hands-on demonstrating that where I built a Java-based application using Apache Camel and you're running that in a cloud container like Kubernetes. Yes, so I've actually been lucky to do two presentations today. So I did the keynote presentation this morning. And the idea behind that was to look at really like the history of Java because it's now 21 years old and, and more specifically at how open source has affected Java because the OpenJDK project is now 10 years old and it shows the kind of age of Java and the maturity of it. And then looking a little bit at the future and what might be coming you know, after Java SE9 in the future of that. So that was really kind of a, a way of looking at what the state of Java is at the moment in the future. The second presentation I did this afternoon was looking at JDK 8 and specifically about functional programming that's now part of Java. And that's a, a real sort of change for developers is to understand how to use functional programming. So my idea was to sort of use the lessons I'd learned from learning how to use JDK 8 and streams and lambdas and help people understand some of the things that they should do with them, but also some of the things that they should avoid doing. And that was quite important to, to have those lessons in there. Yeah, of course. So my, my talk was on security architecture in the Java platform. It basically described how does the Java security sandbox model evolve throughout the versions of the Java platform. 
and also what are the supporting utilities in the JDK platform that fulfill the security sandbox model. And I think this is an essential knowledge for Java developers as nowadays it's very important to be aware of the security mechanisms that are implemented as part of the Java platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, my talk was about Spock, which is a testing framework for Groovy and Java. And it's really, really highly expressive, really nice, and really fun to work with. Uh, yeah, uh, my talk is about testing, let's say, but not in the sense of unit tests, but in the, um, in the high level test. So, uh, basically, the, the, the big problem that nowadays uh, companies find is that they write tests that runs in a uh, let's say in an isolated environment, but then when they deploy this to production, then the application will start to crash because it has not been tested in that environment. So uh, th this talk is about, okay, it's great to write unit tests and tests that runs in an isolated environment, but also you need to write tests in a production-like environment. So you can be confident that when you deploy your application into production, uh, the application is not going to crash. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yesterday and even the day before, I, I had two talks about refactoring. Refactoring is something that everyone is talking about and everyone knows this fear. So I wanted to show how can we do this in practice, step by step, in the smallest possible steps, so we can refactor our code mercilessly, a little, but every day. Yeah, uh, we had a presentation about uh, how we do uh, 42 times deployments a day in uh, Finn, which is a ship's uh, company in Norway. Um, it was about our process and how we do test driven development. And uh, we use uh, a lot of tools that create uh, this type of things. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about Jeb and Spock. Jeb is a tool for uh, browser automation, and I'm going to show how it integrates with Spock, that is a testing framework, a framework, and both together make our functional tests like really nice and really readable, and that's what I want to, I'm going to show. 